Book Minister Foley once said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing models obsolete. I think I can safely say that uh, nobody understands quantum mechanics. Contemporary models of atomic phenomena are abstract, quantitative descriptions of gravity, electromagnetism, and nuclear decay. This has historically been great for engineering applications, but today it is necessary to go beyond what has worked in the past. The purpose of this channel is to pursue a visual model, one that is based on a material interpretation of the atom that allows far more people to ponder how the world works. When it comes to understanding if a picture is worth a thousand words, then a movie is worth a trillion equations. I'll bet that there's a whole realm of things that you know happen either because you've experienced them or you've read about them, but you have no idea why they happen, even if you think you do. For example, when you drop something, it falls to the ground. But why? Let's ask Average Joe. If I take this tennis ball and I drop it on the ground, it falls. Why does it fall? Well, that's because of gravity, ma'am. And what is gravity? Gravity is a force. Excellent. So it is the force of gravity that makes the ball fall to the ground. But what causes that force? Well, it's a bit technical for uh, this very casual conversation, but mm. I would say that it is a result of the curvature of space-time. So the curved space-time causes the force of gravity, which makes the ball fall. But how does warped space-time interact with the ball. The ball understands what it should do, ma'am. I see. But nothing's touching it. It's just kind of... the math tells it where to go. I think that you should consult an actual scientist, ma'am. Thank you, Average Joe. I'll do that. Trust the science. That's a very good point. Just like Average Joe, most people defer to the experts on this, but it turns out the experts aren't exactly sure either. Don't get me wrong, their equations precisely quantify electromagnetic radiation, god particles, quantum tunneling, even general relativity, to many decimal places. But at the end of the day, the equations don't tell you anything about the physical structures that caused the detected events. To uncover these hidden structures, we're gonna have to find a way to put the mechanical back in quantum mechanics. That's easier said than done, since there's been a century-long reluctance to seek what the equations actually mean. Somewhere between Newton and today, physicists decided they didn't need materials to explain action. Interestingly, this hasn't caused an immediately obvious loss in our ability to engineer, which makes most people shrug their shoulders. After all, who cares if we don't know why the speed of light is the speed of light, or why the equation for gravity works? It just does. We still have cell phones, rocket ships, and self-driving cars. But imagine for a moment if another field of science, like biology or chemistry, depended on quantitative abstraction to the degree that quantum physics does. The word DNA wouldn't bring to mind the image of the familiar double helix. Instead, it would be a set of multidimensional arrays that define its behavior. The non-expert would probably view it as a probability cloud of heredity that collapsed during protein translation. Organic chemistry would have nothing to do with orbital shapes and surfaces. It would be a graduate level course in computational logic, as both molecules and the reactions they participated in would be described by progressively obscure differential equations that inferred everything from binding energy to reaction kinetics. In that universe, a vanishingly small number of people would have an intuitive understanding of these sciences, which means a ton of the life-saving technologies that we rely on today, from medicines that have been designed based on the material conception of molecules to gene therapies that rely on the structure of DNA, would remain unrealized dreams. It feels absurd to consider a world where chemistry and biology are totally divorced from the physical world, but it's important to realize that because these disciplines supervene on physics, and modern physics is built out of causeless quantum fields, then it isn't that absurd. At small enough scales, physicists will tell you there's nothing there except for energy. But what is energy if not something moving? This lack of structural conception about the world means that we, as a species, potentially have a long way to go in terms of manipulating the atomic worlds. Like figuring out ways to escape the planet by disrupting gravity rather than tying astronauts to huge bombs, how to produce endless amounts of cheap, clean electricity by safely controlling atoms rather than burning things, or even how to travel faster than light by influencing the material connections between atoms. At this point in our development, when humans must find ways to push against the physical limits of the world in order to make less of a scar upon it, 
Our progress is slow and fitful. There's only a handful of experts that claim to understand what's going on at the quantum level, and they seem capable only of speaking in math and metaphor. The behavior of things on a small scale is so fantastic. It's so wonderfully different, so marvelously different than anything that behaves on a large scale. You say, electrons act like waves. No, they don't exactly. They act like particles. No, they don't exactly. They act like a kind of a fog around the nucleus. No, they don't exactly. And if you would like to get a clear, sharp picture of an atom, so that you can tell exactly how it's going to behave correctly and have a good image, in other words, a really good image of reality. I don't know how to do it. That image has to be mathematical. We have a mathematical expression, strange as mathematics, I don't understand how it is, but we can write mathematical expressions and calculate what the thing is going to do without actually being able to picture it. Some would have you believe that this is because the quantum world is an exceptionally difficult thing to visualize, a special layer of existence that doesn't obey any of the principles that govern the rest of the world. But it could just as easily be that a physical conception of the world simply fell out of fashion at the turn of the century as a result of an experiment that disproved the existence of a stationary ether and the release of general relativity into the wild. If that were the case, then it might be that what prevented a unified theory of science one that includes gravity as well as electromagnetism, is the fashionable abandonment of the mechanical. To help the world move forward, we're here to show how this happened and how easy it is to fix through a simple material interpretation of the math. Prior to 1887, the year of the Michelson-Morley experiment, the generally accepted model of the universe involved a luminiferous ether. In other words, light was a wave and the ether was the substance that waved. However, the ether was a purely theoretical structure that had never been observed or measured. Enter Michelson Morley, who developed an interferometer to detect the stationary ether. The design was simple. It consisted of an emitter, a half-reflective mirror, two full-reflective mirrors, and a photosensitive detector. When light from the emitter reaches the half-reflective mirror, it splits into two perpendicular beams, which are then reflected by the two equidistant mirrors. At the splitter, these reflected beams are combined and sent to the detector. If they take the same amount of time to come back to the splitter, then the light will be in phase at the detector. The existence of an ether would have been proved by a small phase shift at the detector due to the ether wind dragging on the light in the arms perpendicular to the Earth's movement. The light, however, remained stubbornly in phase, and the luminiferous ether was on the ropes. Over the next few decades, the death of the ether was aided by the fact that even without a medium for light, engineers were developing extraordinary devices, machines that could send voices across the entire ocean, that could see the bones inside the body without making a single cut, and could even transmit moving images. It seemed like understanding the medium wasn't necessary for progress. Even more powerful were the ideas put forth by Albert Einstein, who suggested that a different kind of ether, the non-mechanical space-time of general relativity, was a much better way of looking at the world. Some people are surprised to hear that Einstein proposed an ether theory. But in his own words at Leiden University in 1920, he stated that, quote, according to the general theory of relativity, space without ether is unthinkable. For in such space there would not only be no propagation of light, but also no possibility of existence for standards of space and time, like measuring rods and clocks, nor therefore any space-time intervals in the physical sense. So space-time informed the motion of materials and events within it, like light and gravity. Even as he formulated this new version of the world, it's clear that Einstein recognized it fell short of explaining what was actually happening, as he still believed that it would be a great advance for scientists to, quote, succeed in comprehending the gravitational field and the electromagnetic field together as one unified confirmation. The contrast between ether and matter would fade away, and through the general theory of relativity, the whole of physics would become a complete system of thought. Unification, however, wasn't necessary for the mathematically inclined theorists who eagerly pushed quantum mechanics further and further into the realm of deep weirdness. This nurtured a rift between the physical and theoretical world that has produced increasingly complex mathematics that aren't about any material thing, but they are very good at accurately modeling the behavior of particles. 
This is its own problem, as it often surprises people when they discover that a particle in the context of subatomic processes like electricity or nuclear decay isn't a material. It's just a particular solution to a dynamic wave equation. To complicate things even more, they can also be measurements that emerge from the state of a field, where a field is actually a predictable set of dynamic effects. Abstractions tip to tail. Physicists themselves have no consensus about what a particle is. A recent Quantum Magazine piece listed answers like, quote, a collapsed wave function, or a quantum excitation of a field, an irreducible representation of a group, vibrating strings, deformation of the qubit ocean, and finally, what we measure in detectors. From the outside, it looks like a century of mathematical constructions, first popularized by Einstein and Dirac, have led modern physicists to a place where they have no idea why things happen. Even worse, they're convinced that ideas like relativistic ether are actually materials capable of cause and effect. So what is the solution? Ideally, sciences are founded on the robust relationship between cause and effect. While a law or numerical relationship might capture and parameterize events as they unfold, it cannot be considered as causal. If you balk at that, consider the phrase correlation does not imply causation. That's because a mathematical relationship between two variables doesn't actually mean that they're related. Per capita cheese consumption has no bearing on the number of engineering degrees that have been awarded, even though they track so nicely together. The same can be said for all other mathematical equations. Relating one quantity to another isn't sufficient to explain what's happening. You have to understand why the quantities are related to one another. A refusal to participate in this, such as the insinuation that the non-physical has a place in physics, is to rely on the supernatural. Tragically, however, this has become the status quo in post-Einsteinian physics. A material differs starkly from an idea, like space-time or motion or velocity, which are all referent to what some material is doing. A material is defined by the presence of a surface, a border that separates what's inside from what's out. Fields and clouds do not meet this criteria, neither does the formless ether. Instead, we're going to propose how structures in motion explain what we're seeing. If you want to see an example of this, check out our initial video on gravity, linked here. Future videos are going to explore how to visualize atomic processes like electricity, light, and magnetism as the result of a materially interconnected world that mirrors the structures observed on the astrophysical scale. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it with your friends so they can also benefit from the food for thought. If you want to discuss these ideas, hop over to our Facebook or Discord server. And make sure to subscribe so you stay up on what comes next. And check out Demystifying Science, our other channel. I don't know how to do it.